Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings for the We Are Change weekly wrap-up where we go over all the important news that happened this week that you should know about, but most likely is being censored or denied to you in some way. Now, first of all, before we start off this week, a lot of people are pissed off at Donald Trump, as illustrated by this video. <laughs> Shades of TLC! In Channel City! Now, of course, a lot of this news is centered around DACA and a lot of the policy shifts within Donald Trump's administration, which has left a lot of people in Donald Trump's base, including people like Ann Coulter, saying, quote, at this point, who doesn't want Trump impeached? There's even a company that started making flip-flops with contradictory Donald Trump tweets that, of course, show what he previously believed and how he completely flip-flopped and changed his mind. Now, this is something that we've been warning you about for about a year now, that the promises that Donald Trump has been making when he was running to be president of the United States, that those promises were going to be a lot different than his policy when he becomes president of the United States. A lot of you people have criticized me, called me a pessimist, said I was totally dead wrong, made a lot of mean comments about me and told me, wait, let Donald Trump prove himself. And I think he has, but not in the way that those people expected him to. But regardless, in today's video, I want to talk about another major catastrophic flip-flop by Donald Trump that the mainstream media is not paying attention to. We're also going to talk about, you know, just the illicit international arms trade, a possible war between Iran and Israel, and we actually have some good news this week, so stay tuned to the end of this video. But first of all, a couple months ago, Donald Trump announced that he would end the secret CIA program that armed rebels inside of Syria. This program knowingly armed radical Islamic terrorist groups inside of Syria. Donald Trump announced that he would end this and stop funneling arms with U.S. tax dollars towards radical Islamic terrorists that, you know, of course, are committing terrorist attacks all over the world. This, of course, re-energized a lot of the base for Donald Trump. And when I initially reported on this article, I raised skepticism to how a secret program could be ended and if Donald Trump really was going to do this, which led to more mean comments from a lot of the audience. And yeah, now we're finding out Donald Trump flip-flopped again with the latest news of the Pentagon spending up to $2.2 billion on Soviet-style arms for for Syrian rebels. Now, of course, this is not a major surprise to us since two and a half weeks ago, we reported about the journalist that was interrogated and fired after she exposed how the CIA was still arming Syrian rebels through diplomatic flights that transported tons of weaponry to Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Turkey under diplomatic cover that, of course, would eventually lead into the hands of anti-Assad rebel groups inside of Syria. But this latest Pentagon story is more disturbing, as we're finding out that the Pentagon was falsifying paperwork and committing a cover-up to hide the paper trail of this activity. As an investigative report uncovered how the Pentagon and the Department of Defense were scrubbing its own paper trail falsifying documents. So, you know, of course, you wouldn't find out about how your taxes are used to finance radical Islamic terrorism. And if that wasn't despotic enough, we're also finding out that the Pentagon was doing this through a network of private arms dealers that are connected to organized crime groups in Eastern Europe. You know, why not just cut in the middleman, give him some of your tax dollars, profits to organized crime and mafiosos. Now, people need to understand that this is a very big deal that is not getting any major U.S. mainstream media coverage for a very specific reason. The German government is even taking this very seriously as they just opened up a probe and an investigation into this illegal Pentagon arms trafficking operation. And what ultimately is happening because of this continuation of sending billions of dollars of weapons to radical Islamic terrorist groups is that it created a proxy war between the United States and Russia. As we're seeing that just this Saturday, where Russia warplanes bombed and attacked U.S.-backed Syrian forces. And it's not only a major proxy war between world powers that we're dealing with because of this disastrous program that Donald Trump flip-flopped on, it's also creating a major problem for people in the Western world as we're finding out in the United Kingdom, where the UK Security Service, MI5, estimates that over 815 Brits left the country to fight alongside ISIS and other terrorists groups are now returning home to the United Kingdom where they are not even being deported, 
nor facing any criminal charges for their actions. Now the UK government is actually debating on deporting these terrorists to The Hague so they could actually face, you know, just the International Criminal Court for the obvious committed war crimes that were financed by US tax dollars. And yeah, now because of that, we have to live with a bigger terror threat domestically inside Western countries that of course the government uses as an excuse to take away more power and liberty away from you. Do you guys see how this all just fits perfectly and works best for more government, more authority, more power, as we the people, and especially the innocent people in Syria, get screwed over? Now the bigger question here is why is this happening? Why did Donald Trump flip flop? Well of course a lot of this has to do with the video we did a few days ago that's entitled Who is Jared Kushner and Why We Should All Worry Now? Where we uncovered how Jared Kushner's latest peace effort trip to Israel was really about Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States not wanting the Syrian government in coordination with Iran, Russia, and China winning the Syrian war. And the next steps that they would take to, of course, make sure that this conflict does not end. And we've been seeing that with Israel's latest actions, bombing Hezbollah forces inside of Syria, and has a lot more to do with the next conflict that this country is planning. And that's why we're seeing articles like this from NBC that that are titled, quote, Hezbollah's new strength leaves Israel border tense. And of course, Hezbollah is connected with the Iranian government, which of course, Israel, Saudi Arabia, and the United States see as a mutual enemy. And just as the Syrian government, in cooperation with the Chinese, the Russians, the Iranians, and Hezbollah are about to defeat ISIS and the rebel groups inside of Syria, right as they're on their verge of victory, we had Israel try to work out a deal with the Russians for the future of Syria, which of course was denied by Moscow just recently, and even refused a buffer zone in Syria that would separate Iranian-backed and Hezbollah forces near the Israeli border. The Russian military has actually deployed their own forces near the Israeli border to monitor the safe zones after aggressive moves by Israel. Such aggressive actions by Israel that leaves many people questioning if they're preparing for war. And that's literally what we said was going to happen on August 25th this year. And we're seeing it carried out right now as Israel is conducting its largest military drill in 20 years. They are of course colluding with Saudi Arabia. Arabia and the United States on this bigger geopolitical move that will have major implications on not just the Middle East, but the entire world, especially with the escalations of these proxy wars that are happening between Russia, China, and the United States, which for a number of years now has been targeting and trying to go after Russia's and China's ally, Iran, which Saudi Arabia and Israel, along with the United States, have been making moves designed directly to confront Iran to the point where people are saying that an Iran war is coming and that people should buy oil stocks now. Which I guess is, is good financial advice, but, but, but we're still dealing with a war here which should be more important than just your, your stock portfolio. And of course, a lot of this has to do with the U.S. petrodollar that allows U.S. hegemony that Iran has been threatening for a number of years now. And it's not just them, it's also countries like North Korea, China, Russia, and now Venezuela that just began publishing oil basket prices in won instead of the US dollar. And surprisingly, all those countries I mentioned don't really receive the most favorable press coverage from the US mainstream media. Now, I'm not saying these countries are perfect, but when you see the US mainstream media cover countries that they don't like for a bigger geopolitical Pentagon program and cover some of the bad things that are happening there, but at the same time ignore all the bad things that are happening in Saudi Arabia, you have to start asking the questions of, what is the mainstream media really doing? And a lot of the bigger geopolitical moves we're seeing the U.S. military make has a lot to do with the U.S. petrodollar, U.S. hegemony, U.S. dollar buying power that we're seeing a decline of as we're seeing de-dollarization right now that leaves a big question mark on the U.S. economy. With these major countries making major pivot moves against the U.S. dollar, against the U.S. economically, the possibility for conflict is higher than it was before. And the U.S. is losing a lot 
lot of its support, even from previous allies like Turkey, that just shifted and pivoted from NATO and signed a Russia missile deal. And that's mainly because of a very aggressive foreign policy that we have seen under George W. Bush, President Barack Obama, and now Donald Trump. Surprisingly, when the presidents change, the foreign policy doesn't. And this week, one brave U.S. Senator, Rand Paul, tried to stop all that by putting a halt to the AUMF, the law that allowed the U.S. president to commit any act of war he wanted without congressional approval, and that bold stand against unconstitutional wars, aggressive foreign policy actions, was... Oh, crap. Rejected by the U.S. Senate. And the reason earlier I said that we are getting closer to war is the only thing that allows the U.S. to have its world supremacy, its world dominance, is the U.S. petrodollar matched with U.S. military spending. Which, by the way, is the largest in the world and larger than China, Russia, Saudi Arabia, India, France, the United Kingdom, Japan, and Germany combined. But don't worry about that. Just keep distracting yourselves with, you know, TVs and movies, which we're finding out also that the CIA and Pentagon are behind over 800 major films and more than a thousand TV titles. According to a new document obtained under the Freedom of Information Act, the CIA and the Pentagon have tirelessly worked behind the scenes on over 800 major movies and more than a thousand TV titles. I wonder what kind of influential work the CIA and Pentagon that are illegally falsifying documents, working with organized crime, using your tax dollars illegally to finance radical Islamic terrorist groups inside of Syria that come back to this country and basically terrorize all of us. I wonder what kind of programming they're working on makes you wonder. Now, in other news, moving forward from the subject, we have a situation from idiocracy coming to fruition in real life here in Mexico right now, where a Coca-Cola bottling plant in Mexico consumed millions of liters of water per day, drying up the wells in Chiapas, Mexico, forcing the residents to have their water turned off since there's none left, and have to buy bottled water and products, and miraculously, most of them are dominated by the Coca-Cola company. We literally saw this in the fictionist film Idiocracy, but now it's happening here in Mexico. Yeah, that should make you think next time you're at a store looking for a nice refreshing beverage. Moving forward in other evil corporation news, we have Amazon that deleted one-star reviews of Hillary Clinton's new book, pretty much showing you how the powerful and elite capitulate to the power of the corporatocracy that will, of course, create a fake perception based on no reality at all, only the delusional belief that this propaganda that they force on you is actually acceptable when in reality it's not. And there's a lot of delusional beliefs from Hillary Clinton that believes the lessons of George Orwell's 1984 is to trust leaders and experts. This is the same person that in her new book said that she wanted to make voodoo dolls of reporters, lawmakers, and stick them with pins, barely took any responsibility for the loss she had in the presidential election, and pointed fingers at Donald Trump, Vladimir Putin, Bernie Sanders, and anyone else, including the reality of the situation. But I heard she has really good reviews on Amazon about her book. Now, as our soul and consciousness is being sucked away from us from the government corporatocracy, let's talk about some actual good news this week. The first one being a major Facebook executive coming out this week saying that Facebook and Google are really just surveillance states. Now, of course, a lot of us knew this, but having someone from the inside warn us about this is a very good sign and shows us that people who are, are part of these corporations are actually willing to speak out and warn you about the troubles that we're all facing. Google now is also facing a major antitrust lawsuit for removing the app Gab, which for many people is a clear antitrust violation. When they removed a major social media network that was considered on the right from being able to be downloaded from the Google Play App Store. This lawsuit's going to be a very interesting case that we're going to cover very closely on this YouTube channel. And also this week, Congress actually voted in favor of the American people for the first time in a very long time 
and approved an amendment that shut down the U.S. Attorney General's Jeff Sessions' proposed expansion of civil asset forfeiture. If you don't know what that is, it's when the police officers arrest you and take away your cash and property, sometimes even your boat or your car or even your house, because you're suspected of committing a crime, and then usually the police officers keep whatever they steal from you and reinvest it back into the police department. Just like we saw a few days ago, where a hot dog vendor was ticketed and had his money taken away by police officers for selling hot dogs without a license or permit. Now, and now we're finding out that that same hot dog vendor from this viral video has raised over $70,000 on GoFundMe after the video of this incident went viral. Seeing a man trying to make a living for himself and having a police officer not only ticket him, but open up his wallet and take his cash away from him has angered a lot of people online and motivated them to raise over $70,000 for this guy. Also this week, former convicted activist journalist Barrett Brown launched an open source project to organize people online called the Pursuance Project that wants to create an activist super organism that will help organize people against any cause that they have. And it seems to me, even though many of the situations we talk about may seem dire and very troubling, but to me, I'm starting to see more and more solutions and answers through third party, through open source, decentralization platforms. And this is a topic that I'm thinking about doing more work in, like giving you more examples of how you could get out of iOS or the Google Play Store. And if this is something that you're interested in, please let me know in the comment section below. And if there's enough demand, I could start making more comprehensive, a little bit more complicated technical videos showing you how to move away from the matrix. Corporatocracy government control scheme, they're all being surrounded with more and more. Also, last week we launched the limited edition We Are Change t-shirt that has sold out already. And if you have any design ideas or concepts or actual images of what the next We Are Change t-shirt should be, please let me know on twitter.com forward slash LukeWeAreChange. We'd love to work more one-on-one -on -one with the audience, see what we could do for each other, help each other out mutually, and at the same time, get some real important meaningful messages out there. So please, again, let me know on twitter.com forward slash Luke, we are changed. And yeah, that's today's broadcast. If you enjoyed it, share it with your friends and family members. Of course, I'm always talking to you guys in the comments section below. And if you want to see us expand and grow and do more, check out wearechange.org forward slash donate because without your participation, without your donations, without your mail, without your Bitcoin or Ethereum or Dashcoin, this independent news organization would not exist. It only exists because of you and you only and you have no idea how much that means to me and that's why every day I end my broadcast by saying I love you thank you again so much for watching